Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of October 20th, 2016. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding. For those folks at home trying to watch the stream, unfortunately you're only hearing my voice. You'll be able to hear the audio, but you won't be able to witness the, the stunning reflections of our faces. TV you can see. TV you can see. Though, <laughs> so if you're watching on television, on cable, It'll be fine, and you won't understand what I'm talking about. But if you're trying to watch online, you'll you'll be disappointed. Um, but uh, subsequent replays of the of the meeting will be the full visual audio experience. Um, uh, our usual custom is to open with public comment and giving the public an opportunity to speak and share their thoughts on any topic. Um, and this evening, there appears to be no one here, so. We won't invite anyone to do that, but that's what we usually do. So if you're predisposed at some point and you want to come to a council meeting, you are you have an issue you want to discuss or share with the council or with the public at large, please feel free to come in and we'll we'll tell you how it's done. So with that said, I'll ask the administrative assistant to call the roll, please. Councillor Bidwell? Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight? Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge? Present. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Councilor Sarah? Here. We have a quorum. We're all in our places with bright, shiny faces. And we have no public hearings scheduled tonight. Uh, are there any announcements? One minute announcements. So remind folks of the Veterans Day Parade. I'll be stepping off Lampern Field on the 1st of November, which is not that far away, actually. And um, participants are asked to assemble with a step off at 11, right? The first? Tuesday. What day? It's Tuesday, isn't it the first? The first is a Tuesday. I'll have to look at the calendar. I don't it's want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the 11th. 11, 11, 11, 11. 11, 11, 11. No, I'm sorry. It is the 11th. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at the first one. But that's right. Thank you. No, that's. It has always been. It was Armistice Day, the, the 11th of November. So don't show up the first. That's like Donald Trump telling people to go vote on the 27th. So um, no other announcements? Uh, communications, proclamations from the mayor? Crikey. Well, this is actually, and uh, item number seven, we are uh, postponing the presentation by the mobility group. Uh, and also, uh, I would ask that we remove the item from the consent agenda uh, until um, the solicitor and others have a chance to vet what's being discussed so we know where we are at and what, what authorities we have and basically to get more information so that's postponed for this evening so now next we move to the consent agenda which has one item and that's the uh, item 16.181 it's the poll petition request oh no I'm sorry it's to approve the minutes move to approve uh, is there a motion? A motion? Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Just for the record, we have a motion to remove this from the consent agenda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, can we, can we, uh, Councilor O'Donnell? I was going to say something. Your request, you kind of requested of yourself that this be removed from the right. consent agenda. So it was. But now that it's off it, should we make a motion to postpone? Yeah, that's it? what for for okay. procedural pro process. Right, so I move to postpone the uh, poll petition request to the next regular meeting. Second that. Uh, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of removing item sixteen point one eighty one, the poll petition request from Mobility LLC. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um. Now we recess for finance, and I ask the gavel over to Council Murphy so we can preside over the finance. So, Pam, would you call the roll of finance, please? 704. This is a record. I, this is Councilor a record. Carney. Present. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. So I need to point out that I have surprisingly little on my desk here. Oh. Well, it's going <laughs> to be a really quick meeting. Then. could be a really quick meeting, but I think it's probably somewhere. So if we'll play the Jeopardy music for a moment, we'll get the agenda for. Yeah, I know. It's a 
left-handed. <laughs> this is going to be expensive. Don't there we go. i got to slow down the meeting somehow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready to go. Um, we need an approval of the minutes of October 6th, 16. Do we have a motion on those? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, on to financial orders. Hmm? Oh, you got to Oh, yeah. Yeah, so financial orders. Um, and this is 16177 to approve the for transfer appropriations from fiscal year 17 CPA funds. So we're going to do some CPA stuff tonight. Upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee, order that the following amounts be appropriated, Mayor's moving into position, uh, from the fiscal 2017 Community Preservation Fund estimated reserves of $1,457,000 uh, for fiscal 2017 community preservation purposes. Uh, $160,000 uh, from estimated CPA community preservation open fund reserves for, um, well, actually, I think they're all in here, for uh, actually, very little detail on these things in this. Do you have the actual order? That's not. What is it? For the CPA transfer. The CPA stuff, I've got the highlights of them, but I don't have the actual details of them. That's it. That's it. That's all it came. Really? That's the whole order. Got to break down that. Sarah, yeah. Sarah's here. Uh, good. Money in the categories. categories. Okay. Well, there's not a lot of detail here, but uh, um, so we're going to put $160,000 in 17 to the CPA Community Preservation Fund Open Space Reserve, $160,000 from 2017 estimated funds for um, historic preservation, $160,000 from 2017 funds for affordable housing, 60,000 in 17 funds for community preservation, administrative, administrative account, and 970,000 for the 2017 CPA reserves um, for the budget or reserve. Also, the following amounts will be appropriated from community preservation funds, budget or reserve for the FY16 community preservation bonding payments. Those are things we've already done. 65000 for principal and $15,075 for interest on the bean farm account, 95000 for principal and um, 36000 for interest on the Florence Fields bond, 270000 for principal and $31,368.33 for interest for the Pulaski Park bond. And uh, Sarah, do you want to talk to us about these things? Sarah? I just wanted to add that there's a request for two reviews on that this evening. Um, and the purpose is because we're trying to get this activity completed along with one of the other um, votes we'll be taking tonight in order to um, send our material to DOR to set the tax rate. And this is one of the required um, pieces of that puzzle that we need to have done. So we're, ho we're hoping to get that done by the end of October. There's no spending at <coughs> all. So we're just hoping we can get very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Of Councilor? I just had a, a question about the estimated $300,000 state match. What, how, did, how does that process work? When when do we really know what it is? That will be finalized in November. And in the event that it's exactly different from what we've estimated, hopefully not, we, we may have to come back here and adjust it. But because this is done so early in the year, the matches that come in and go, usually November, sometimes we'll have Very good. Any other questions in finance? Everyone in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> um, the 
next is 16179 in order to appropriate $3,000 for the GARE collection. And I don't <laughs> appear to have any detail on that one either. So, um. Anyone want to speak to the GARE collection? Thank you. Because there you go. Okay. I don't have a packet over here. So, order that whereas Historic Northampton Inc. submitted a small grants application for community preservation and funding to purchase small climate controlled museum collection shelving units to properly store and display the Gare Collection. Whereas the Gare Collection is a collection of 528 silversmithing and clock tools and accounting books accumulated by the prominent Northampton business that was operated continuously on Main Street from 1785 to 1984, and whereas CPA funds will be used to help secure important historic res resources that tell the 209 year history of a business in the community that has received public support, whereas Northampton, historic Northampton has received matching funds from private donations, and whereas on September 21st, 2016, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend three, that $3,000 in community preservation uh, funds to use to support the project and therefore be ordered that $3,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the historic Northampton Inc. to purchase and install museum shelving to house the Gare Collection and that uh, the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the City Council. Specifically that $3,000 is appropriated from the CPA Historic Preservation Reserve account. We got a motion of finance. Motion of finance. Oh, uh, so moved. Second. All right. Uh, comment. Mr. Pankford, is it attached to that? It's attached uh, to that letter. This letter. So it's perfect. This is the. Oh, there we there go. go. Okay. And the second one's there too. Questions. Silversmithing and watch repair tools. I guess you know, like a lot of things that are going through this for two centuries. Hundred dollar account books, and it operated on Main Street from just after the re revolution until 1984. And Historic Northampton came in with this application because we want to make sure that all of these important artifacts are preserved and displayed in appropriate climate controlled museum quality shelving. Now they're in museum boxes, they're not available for public display. That didn't seem to fit for the importance of this collection. So this shows a Um, I think this is wonderful for the city of Northampton. I've known the Gear family for a long time, and Alice, I used to hang around with her, and I think it's wonderful. At $3,000, we can't go wrong with that. Any other questions? Um, just a comment. There's a cover letter, actually, from the chair to me um, talking about what Sarah just described, which is essentially establishing these $3,000 fast track grants, basically, mm -hmm. allowing them to, so rather than wait, wait for the regular funding cycle, make the funding available for $3,000, uh, $3, is that the, yeah. the cap? Yeah, 3000 CPA funds, which is the maximum funding cost of $3,000. So it's just the maximum And so as they, as they come up, we'll be getting them uh, throughout, as they come up, as opposed to waiting for the regular funding cycle. Uh, these come in twice a year in the same funding cycle. Okay. All right. Councillor. Yes. Can you, how long are these shelves good for? Um, I don't have specific details about the shelves, but they're, they are museum quality and they're, they're good for decades. Quite a while. Any other councillor? I'm just wondering, do you find the community knows about the small grant program? Uh, to the extent they should, and how many applications did you get this year? Uh, we only had two this year. Only two. two. Mm -hmm. I had discussions with some other people who were thinking about it, and they turned out either not to be ready or at least the grant group sure. weren't eligible. We do try and get the word out, but then there's no more community organization. Yeah. 
thought I remember in the past there were more small grants made annually. Um, Maybe I'm just making that up. I don't know. This is our third round. We haven't, we haven't gotten to many. We hope we get to Really? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Councilor? I'm just curious, is the historic preservation silo of funds, def I, I assume it is, just defined broadly enough to include not obviously just, just buildings, but, but uh, a means to protect collections? Yeah, it's documents and artifacts. That's specifically in there? Much, much oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. In the past to the city's vital records. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on this one in finance? Seeing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the next is 16180, in order to appropriate $3,000 for the preservation of the Pro Brush Collection. Order that whereas Historic Northampton Inc. submitted a small grant application for Community Preservation Act funding to purchase climate controlled museum collection shelving units to properly store and display the Pro Brush Collection, whereas the Pro Brush Collection is a collection of daguerreotypes and photographs uh, and products and company records, advertising and manufacturing tools, and whereas Historic Northampton has raised <coughs> 1.1 matching funds from private donations, and whereas CPA funds will be used to help secure important historic resources that play an important role in the history of Northampton manufacturing in Florence and the history of photography and abolitionism in Northampton, and whereas on September 21st, 2016, the Northampton Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend that $3,000 in Community Preservation Act funds be used to support this project. Now, therefore, it be ordered that $3,000 be appropriated from the Community Pres Preservation Act fund to Historic Northampton, Inc., to purchase and install museum shelving units to house the Pro brush collection and that grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee and the Mayor and City Council, specifically that $3,000 is appropriated from the CPA Historic Preservation Reserve. We have a motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Yeah. All right, so mm -hmm. two quick slides on this one. The, the first one um, gives a detail about the pro-brush that we already know pro-brush is a staple in Florence for many years. And then photographs and all of the things that ProBrush made over the years, including the garotype cases, dinnerware, manufacturing tools, and brushes, of course. And there's a, a new little ad that I found that uh, the, the Florence prophylactic brush is made in a little New England town in a clean, airy factory under scientific sanitary conditions. Uh, and the, the next slide shows some examples of the, the items in the ProBrush collection. Any questions for Sarah? Maintaining the ProBrush collection. Mm -hmm. No questions? Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Uh, the next is 16186, in order to authorize budgetary transfers to workers' comp in uh, An order? Second. Where's 186? <coughs> um, for insurance transfers, we're going to do uh, general liability insurance. We're going to do a $66,000 transfer from employee liability and um, a $3,507 transfer from police fire accident insurance. And we're going to put the $69,507 workers' compensation. Did we skip Any one? Answer? Yes, we skipped one. Uh, I think we Second? Second. Uh, Susan. Questions? No? All in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Okay, now we're back to parking fee 16185. 
order to suspend certain parking fees for certain dates in 2016. <coughs> order that on the following day, collections of fees for on-street and off-street parking spaces, excluding the gear parking garage, be suspended. Friday, November 25th, 16, which is called Black Friday. Saturday, November 26th, which is Small Business Saturday. Saturday, December 24th, which is Christmas Eve. And Saturday, December 31st, which is first night New Year's Eve. Motion? So moved. Make a motion. Second. Uh, and the mayor's here to talk about it. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, the next is 16187, in order to impose a lien for cross connection charges and fees that have not been paid by a due date. Whereas, in order to ensure that all potable water throughout the city of Northampton water supply system is free from any potential outside contamination by regulation of the Department of Environmental Protection, the city is required to have an approved program that surveys all potential cross connection sites and tests all devices. Double check valves devices are tested annually to reduce pressure zone devices and are tested semi-annually. All commercial, industrial, and agricultural buildings must be resurveyed every 10 years for cross connections. <coughs> Whereas the Stephen North Hampton bills landowners for a fee and charges <coughs> associated with the cross connection program, including an initial application and approval fee of $65, an annual fee based upon the devices owned and tested. And whereas Mass General Law 40, subsection 58, provides that any city or town may impose a lien on real property located within the city or town for any local charge or fee that has not been paid by its due date, said lien shall be known as municipal charges, provided that a separate vote at a town meeting or by a city or town council is taken for each type of charge or fee. And whereas the city of Northampton cannot presently lien property for unpaid cross connection fees, and whereas the city desires to include cross connection fee charges in its municipal lien program, now therefore it be ordered that in accordance with Mass General Law 40, subsection 58, charges and fees for cross connections shall be included as a municipal charges lien and the city may impose a lien on real property located within the city for cross connection charges and fees that have not been paid by the due date. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right. Uh, and Susan's going to talk to us about this. Well, it's, you laid it out pretty well. It's, it's a program that the DPW does. They have to go to um, various locations in the city and make sure that the cross connection valves are doing their bill for that service and people don't always pay their bills so we, in those cases we would like to have the ability to put a lien on the property just like we would lien an out, outstanding water or sewer bill we'll be able to lien the cross connection fee because it's a property real estate property um, particular charge you can lien it on that property so if that property sells Okay. Yes, so I'm having a problem with this. <laughs> we don't have a lien on properties now, correct? You're not doing this. This is something new? No, property, right now, if, if, if a property 
property owner did not pay their real estate taxes, we would be putting a lien on their property. Bill. Right, but this is different. If, right, if they did not pay their water bill or their sewer bill, right. that, now we're adding the cross connection as another charge that could be leaned on the, on the real estate bill. With, so, so, but tax. without the charge, you can still go ahead and put a lien on it, right? No? But not on a cross connection fee. Without taking this vote, we can't put a lien okay. on Okay, I got you now. If, 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 if property owners chose not to pay this, it's very difficult to get them to pay it. So this is, this is a method to use to recoup that cost. How many properties do we have that are under this? I don't know. I can't find that. And I, well, I can't give you an exact number, um, but I know that it's a pretty small percentage of them are residential. Um, okay. It tends to be primarily commercial um, that have this cross connection um, valve that basically we're trying to pre prevent backflow into the water supply of sewer or, or other stuff in the water supply. Sounds supply. like it's a lot of sprinklers and things like that. Well, primarily people who have sprinkler systems, large commercial. I gotcha. Uh, it's primarily those. Okay. Um, and this is a requirement the state we're supposed to inspect them and make sure they're functioning. And so primarily it would be the, the, the handful of, of residences in Northampton and there's not that have a residential sprinkler system. We don't have many of them. So. Okay, I was kind of worried when I saw agricultural on there, like farmers and that. No, it, a lot of the large commercial properties that have active charged systems, if water pressure is lost, you don't want water that's been sitting in a commercial sprinkler system for two years to like feed back into the water supply and then get pumped into somebody's house. So. Okay. Any other questions in finance for this? Counselor? Just curious how widespread a problem this is, the, the, the collections problem. Any other questions in finance? Then in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We're only looking for one reading on this. Okay. <coughs> um, next is 16188, in order to approve a gift of labor and materials for the Bridge Street School Library. Order that the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts the donation of labor and materials valued up to $100,000. A gift to the City of Northampton from It Takes a Community Foundation in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Approves using gifted funds as requested by the donor for the reservation of the Bridge Street School Elementary Library. Motion finance? So moved. Second. 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 Um, comment? from <coughs> the mayor or the, it's a good thing to fix the library. No problem. A little cross connection. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, this is actually uh, a matter that we discussed actually at the, at the school committee meeting last Thursday. Um, initially, um, the, well, Principal Choquette and the PTO and a number of community members in the Virginia community have been working on a really exciting uh, sort of library renovation project. Uh, for the Bridge Street School Library. Um, and they um, received a grant from the It Takes a Community Foundation um, uh, of $100,000. Um, so see, the school committee approved it, approved the project. We saw some of the work that they're going to do. Um, we then found out after that vote that there's a deadline on, the, on that funding being dispersed. Um, and so rather than have it become a cash gift, that the gift would be instead in labor and services, that they would pay for some of the labor and services. And we're talking about replacing flooring, um, you know, replacing shelving, um, some construction work within the actual library. That will be you know, supervised by central services and school department, um, but it will be funded directly by this foundation. So, um, so because of that, um, and because we have NPS has a $50,000 limit on uh, <coughs> gifts that it can accept. It triggered that limit, so we have to come to you to have this vote um, to accept any kind of gift other than money uh, over $50,000. So, 
so we're asking for uh, your approval under Chapter 44, Section 53A um, to accept these, uh, this donation of labor materials. Questions for the Mayor and Finance? Uh, you want two readings? We would like two readings because, again, um, there's a December 31st deadline to uh, expend this, and so they need to, they would like to get going and get contracts out of it. So that works out before December 31st. Um, I believe it's a calendar year grant program. So um, initially they thought they were going to just get a grant check and they'd be able to, and then there was uh, some continuing. Um, having just spent a lot of time in the library yesterday for open house night, I can say it's very much needed, this work, which is fantastic and it's very <laughs> exciting. But so this money needs to be spent before the end of the year is what you're saying? Yeah, the work needs to be done by the, uh, by the end of the year. That's what we were So is there a plan for? There is a plan and there's, a, there's been a committee working on it. Um, Principal Joe Katz been working on it. There's, um, uh, there's, I believe, for the school committee, uh, school community, who is an architect who's put together. Um, for those of you who have uh, been following the Jackson Street project, it's very similar to that kind of a grassroots effort. Um, and they're also going to be doing some fundraising as well. This isn't all of the work, okay. uh, but this is some of the work that's going to be done. Um, I didn't, again, Principal Showcat came to the school committee to make a presentation to the school committee. Um, I didn't bring a copy of that because I wasn't asking you to approve the redesign, but just the, the actual the transfer. But there, uh, you can check with her. Um, it's, it's, you know, they're trying to uh, make it um, more user friendly, more places for kids to sit and read, and um, some maker space, and you know, the, the kinds of stuff that modern libraries have technology, um, better shelving, lighting, uh, flooring, all those kinds of things. Yeah. That's great. And they're also working on their. Uh, collection, I believe. I think the average age of the book collection is, you know, 1970 or something. So it's in the early mid 70s is the average age. So, um, so there's also some work that's going to be part of other fundraising. I think that's going to happen. The PTO is obviously involved. So, Alfred, do you have a question for the mayor? Yeah, forgive me if you've already mentioned this. Do you know who um, the It Takes a Community Foundation is? Yeah, it's actually. Um, uh, okay. He's the lead singer of Stained. Uh, Aaron Lewis. Aaron Lewis. <laughs> yes. Uh, Aaron Lewis is the um, is the person okay. that it's it's his foundation, okay. um, and it, and actually um, a Bridge Street parent, as it turns out, mm -hmm. um, is the president of the board mm -hmm. of that foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim Van Epps, um, who's also the Sandry Oil. Sandry Oil, Sandry Oil um, and lives in Northampton. It's a Northampton mm -hmm. resident. Is lives on Union Street. Lives on Union Street, yes. Um, and so, uh, so yes, so that that's the, yeah. I hadn't heard of the foundation okay. either, but that is the yeah, the foundation. Okay. Yeah. And they support community initiatives and education and, and hmm. youth kinds of programs. Yeah. Hmm. No, no. Um, anyone else? Councilor Bidwell. That, that, that was my question too. Oh. Just curious about yeah. about the okay. foundation. Yeah. Okay. Google Any other questions for? Uh, for the mayor on this one? Seems like a good thing. All in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The next is 16189, in order to approve gift funding expenditure at the Senior Center for Good Report. Order that the following expenditure from the Senior Center gift fund be approved. $6,193 for 13 desktop computers for use by seniors at the Senior Center computer room. A motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Anyone, anyone have questions for the mayor on this one? Counselor. Um, how old are the computers, Mayor, that are in the computer room now? Um, I'm pretty certain they're original to when the center first opened. Um, so that would, we're going on, you know, six or seven years now, which, as we know, in computer um, years, that's you know significant. So. This would this would uh, this upgrades that uh, that computer room, which gets a lot of use to new, you know, I think there are HP uh, desktops with you know bigger monitors and um, uh, 
for that space, which gets a lot of use for training and <laughs> seniors can use it. So, and yeah. this is coming out of the revolving gift fund for the senior center. And we have, I think, what, two instructors? Yep. On, and I've heard excellent, excellent um, things about how people are going there for quite a long time and are so pleased of learning how to run the computers. Mm -hmm. And I know I've heard myself that the computers were just not operable. They were getting a little slow, that's correct. Oh, they exactly. Were, they were, um, yeah, they were. Uh, so this is a great upgrade, and obviously we, we appreciate all the many people who make gifts to the Senior Center, because this is funds that are coming out of the gift fund to be able to pay for that. So. Are there like colleges like Smith College or maybe Amherst College, University of Mass, where sometimes, which I do know, like they get rid of their computers yeah. or they donate them? Yeah, we um, uh, actually, uh, uh, last Thursday at the school committee, we accepted several um, uh, donated computers. Um, they tend to be uh, used computers. Um, right. And from Smith, they tend to be IMACs. Um, and so those we've been using in our tech lab at you know, for NCTV and the tech mm -hmm. lab. And, and we have IMACs at the high school. So they work really well in that application. Okay. I know the Senior Center um, has tended to use Windows-based computers. And so um, we typically, those are typically the ones that Smith donates. I don't know about UMass, but I know that Smith makes donations uh, from time to time to the school. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions for the mayor? No. Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, so the next thing is Susan and an update, quarterly update on our financials. So I'm going to be talking about um, two quarterly reports tonight. Um, the quarterly report for fiscal 2016, which ended June 30th. So it's the fourth quarter of that year. And then I have the first quarter of 2017, um, which is only three months, so there's not as
this year, 1.63. That's a growth of $74,000 in ambulance revenue. Um, again, I'm not sure that's a good thing. A lot of people are riding in the ambulance, but it, for us, as far as revenue, that was um, an unexpected increase. Uh, if you look down in the um, section called licenses and permits, um, this is there's a section where you'll see building inspector, plumbing, wiring, weights and measures, and um, periodic inspections. Again, these are economically driven factors. Um, there was a lot of building activity. Permits this year brought in $80,000 more than they did in 2015. So that was another good thing. Um, if you look in the next section for federal revenue, Medicare re reimbursement from the schools, the schools apply for Medicare, Medicaid um, reimbursement um, for students in, that receive uh, Medicaid eligible services in our schools. And last year, we br they brought in 375,000, this year 487, so again, a growth of about 110,000. If you flip to the last page, which is page five, you can see in the end the revenues were 1.377 million over estimates. They came in at 101.6. Last year our revenues were 101.3. So a little bit more, about $335,000 overall more in revenues than, than last year, above our estimates. Again. Revenues are up like two million over last year, but the growth um, was about three hundred and thirty-five thousand. And the amount of uncollected taxes, if you go back to page one, the first two lines where it says PP tax revenue, that's personal property, and RE is real estate. You can see we did not collect twenty-three thousand in personal property or four hundred and fifty in real estate. That's um, but we did collect. 99.1% of our revenue. So we have a very good collection rate, and this is not money that will be lost to us. This is money that we lean and we get back through tax title. And we get 60% interest on that stuff. So it's yeah, like the yes. gift that keeps on giving. Right. Yeah. So, so if you go to the next page after the revenues, you'll see the expenses for the general fund, and this section excludes the schools. Um, there's not a lot to talk about here where you see um, surpluses under the last column where it says available budget. A lot of the surpluses tend to be in salary line items and that's generally a factor of there being vacancies. So, it, and the larger the department, sometimes the larger the number. So if you flip through and you get to the third page, um, one of the largest turns, turnbacks um, in unspent funds was in the police department. They had about 503,000 of unspent in salaries, and that's primary, that was driven by <coughs> vacancies and the time that it takes to fill vacancies in the police department. And if you flip to the next page, which would be page four of this, you'll see the fire department similarly had about $228,000 returned in salary. Again, a factor of vacancies. Also in the treasurer and the collector line items, as you know, the treasurer and collector were combined at the beginning of FY16, but in the budget for, for 16, we had anticipated two separate departments. We didn't know we were going to be moving in that direction. So there's surplus there because that consolidation eliminated one and a half positions. So there was extra salary there as well. Um, the next one, um, next page, page five, um, you can see snow and ice. Um, again, we are very fortunate that it was a, this is the lowest amount in the last four years that we've spent. This was 42% of what we spent in 2015. Um, we spent over 900,000 on snow and ice, and this year we spent 398. So that was, that was another factor helping us this year. Um, if you look on page six, you'll see a surplus in veterans' benefits. Um, while veterans' benefits that were paid out were slightly higher than last year, about 40,000 more than, than fiscal 15, it was below our three-year average. And I budget for a rolling <coughs> But reimbursements catch up. Right, and reimbursements catch up. So, so there's a small turn back there. Um, if you look on page seven, down towards the bottom, line 750, interest on debt, had a savings of 40,000. That was a direct result of the refunding that we did, or the refinancing of bonds that we did in December 2015. 
Uh, you flip to the next page, which is page eight. About halfway down the page, you'll see medical insurance, and you'll see that there was a turn back of almost 250000 Again, when there are vacancies, you don't. we don't spend on the health insurance. So that is why there's a surplus there. So if you get to the last page, which is page nine, um, oh, one other thing, cherry sheet assessments, which is the um, top of page nine. You can see we had a surplus of 224,000. Cherry sheet assessments are basically school choice outgoing tuition and charter school outgoing tuition. We paid slightly more than we estimated in outgoing school choice, but we paid slight about 200,000 less in outgoing charter. It's a still a really, really big number. But the state does this estimate, and then they give then the charges for the actuals. So there have been years where the actuals have been more than what we anticipated. So fortunately, this year, there was some money left over there. So if you get to the bottom, you can see that we spent 96.3% of our budget. Last year, we spent 97%. Um, so this year, return to our you know, turnbacks were about $500,000 more than last year. So overall, this is how we generate free cash when revenues are higher than estimated and expenditures are lower than estimated. That's how free cash is generated. So we anticipate that these numbers that are, will have a fairly healthy free cash number. It'll be about the same as prior years, somewhere between three and 4% of our total. When are you thinking December, early December, we'll get that certified? Probably, although Department of Revenue has lost so many staff that they're prioritizing setting tax rates before doing free cash. So, so but be before the end of the year, you think we'll get it? Yeah, it, it could be January before we see the We'll know the number, we just won't get it certified. We won't get it certified and delivered. Right. You and mention that that's why you're trying to turn in the tax rate early. Quickly. Right. right. The sooner we get, get a tax rate, rate done, the sooner we get in the queue to get our free cash. Right. Then we get our free cash. And, and once free cash is certified, then we'll be coming to you with We can free, free up free. that, right. that money. That is the stabilization funds. So. so the next report in this, um, that's still in fiscal 2016, is the school department. School department is also in the general fund. We have two school departments, as you know. The first one here is Northampton Public Schools. So if you go to page two, you'll see they turned back 12,921. That was a, a product of unexpended encumbrances. So we, at the end of FY15, they encumbered on they encumbered bills that had been outstanding um, that hadn't come in yet. They didn't spend all of that. So that's why that is being. And the same with Smith Boat, which is the next two pages. They ended up turning back $9,882. With Smith Boat, when they turn back money, we end up having to give it back to them because we have to meet next percent. So when we get when their end of the year report gets certified, the Department mm -hmm. of Ed is going to tell us, and you need to give it back. But that primarily is because you budget them really accurately up front. So right. if they turn it back, they're due that money anyway. Right. These were uh, these were encumbrances that they also encumbered at the end of 15 but didn't spend. Mm -hmm. So all right. So moving on to the enterprise funds, which are the next page. There, as you know, are four enterprise funds. And this first page is simply the revenue from each of the enterprise funds. Uh, both the sewer and water enterprise funds both brought in about $450,000 less in revenue than they did the year before. It is directly correlated with the use of water. So water use, quantity of water use was down. Um, and since sewer use is based on the amount of water use, the, it's almost identical. Yeah, but the last two years we've had water restrictions, correct? correct. So people couldn't use water they may have otherwise wanted to. Right, right. So, you know, there is some, which is one reason we want to keep healthy, you know, free cash or, un, mm -hmm. you know, undesignated fund balance. To make up that. Yeah. Those. Uh, if you turn to the next one, uh, stormwater, um, that brought in um, a, a little bit more than we had budgeted. But if you remember, 2015 was the first year of the stormwater. <laughs> so there was a lag in collections. So we're now starting to get to the point where all of the collections a full year is coming. Because we were trying to target two million, but we went over because of the previous year. Right, that was money that came in from 
Fire Council, you have a question? Yes. Um, I have received some calls, Susan, from residents and people in the city asking, well, we had a water restriction, so why are they paying for a stormwater utility fee? Well, the way I the can't answer it. Yeah, the way the, well, I, the way the stormwater utility fee is written, the way it's designed, the way it's implemented, is that it's a charge, fixed monthly charge uh, based on the impervious, impervious surface um, versus the water and sewer, which is used on water consumption. So, um, so we don't have for, we, there's not currently a provision in the, I'm not sure how you would measure it, but the, not currently in the stormwater fee, uh, a provision. Um, for lack of rain. <laughs> lack of rain, I suppose. Yeah, that's not currently in the, system, in, in the current system. So that's the best explanation I can give. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last revenue um, source is the um, Solid Waste Enterprise Fund, and its revenues were basically the same as 2015. Five So, so if you flip the next page, you'll see the expenditures in each of these funds, and you can see sewer enterprise funds, <coughs> 3.8, water 96.7 percent of their total, stormwater 92.7, and solid waste 95.2. So again, these funds, when their revenues exceed estimates and their expenditures are less than we thought they generate their own free cash, and that's the money that is retained in each one of those individual funds. So the free cash generated by solid waste stays with solid waste, and, and likewise. Excellent. Questions for Susan on the report? Nope. Counselor. Uh, I, I just curious, within the school department, un unlike fire and police, where you expected this vacancies to translate into, you know, 92 and 93 percent, it was virtually 100% for, for, for personnel. Is that because there are, basically there are... Yeah, she's going to put on her school business yeah. administrator. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sure yeah. I'm going to be sorry I asked the question. Lot, no, no. No, no there's, no. Lot, there's <laughs> lots of vacancies in the school department, and they end up moving their money around throughout the year. You know, when there's, but with them, when there's vacancies, they have to bring in subs. Right. So there may be lines that have, you know, haven't been spent for English teachers, but then sub lines go yep. Mm -hmm. um, in general, though, schools generally do have PS that they end up using for OM, and that's transfers. Yeah, but they, they're allowed to do that. They're allowed yep. to do that, and yeah. and since I came to Northampton, which was in 2004, Northampton, unlike many other communities, always tells the school department spend your own money. That is really un it's not typical in other communities. They try to get the school department to give it back. And I think what's been great in Northampton is that we say, we know you have needs. You know, maybe you're not going to need it all for personnel, but you certainly can use it to buy books over there. So I think it's been I think it's been really good. And I know our new business manager is just kind of surprised by that. Like, wow. You can make us give money. We want to see it. But the other thing is, yeah, that wasn't the answer I thought you were going to give, but that's okay. But the other piece is that they have school choice money, and so they're they're also trying to spend all of the appropriation first because school choice they keep as sort of their reserve, like their free their cash. Free cash. Mm -hmm. So they're going to spend every appropriation dollar before they touch any yep. of the school choice dollars because the school choice dollars gets retained, right. correct, as a, Absolutely. as a, that's just another, one of the other reasons why. <laughs> that $9,000, but it is true, we do not request that they give back, turn back to the end of the year. So. Wait, any more questions for planning? So, so, uh, so all those internal transfers within, within school, those, those come before the school committee, or that just happens at the discretion of the administration? They come before the school committee, mm -hmm. yeah. Good, thank you. Any more questions in finance? No. That's all on our agenda. No, no, we got 20 <coughs> I'm That's right. You have another report. There really is nothing to talk about with 2017. Um, everything is going as expected. It's only been three months, but I'm not seeing any you know, alarming trends. Um, so there really is not a whole lot.
Uh, I just uh, actually note that I just got a text from someone saying the microphone at the podium is not working, Jen, I guess, or it's not broadcasting. Just a heads up. Um, Council Murphy stepped out for a second, so I'll, I can, does anyone have any questions? Do I just read the bottom lines? Or um, yeah, at this point, revenues right now, um, revenues are about 22%, so 25% of the way through the year. Um, there's the last page of the general fund, about 30%, um, which is fine because there are a lot of things that we pay right up the front. We pay all our insurance policies, etc. right at the beginning of the year. If you look at the enterprise funds, uh, sewers at 23.3% for revenue, water's 25.8%, stormwater 24.4%, and solid waste 249 exactly where you would expect it to be one quarter of the way through. And um, and for expenditures, uh, sewer is at 7.7, .7, water 19, storm water 5, and solid waste 9. That's not unusual because they have a lot of large ticket um, construction and uh, equipment purchases, and those may not, those happen at variable times of the year. Uh, I know it's a, so, so pretty healthy hotel and motel and meals tax numbers for the first quarter. How, is that is it, is that seasonality that we usually see in, 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 in the first quarter, or is there anything more going on that than, than no. the seasonality? Um, these are the various quarters have different trends, and we keep it on, on what each quarter is so we can compare other quarters. So these are about close to where we usually are for that. Okay. Can you reflect? I mean, we, we've obviously lost the Clarion because it's off the face of the earth. And we added the Marriott. Do you, can you get a feel for what how that's going to shake out? Well, the last year we had an increase in hotel of 83000 I'm not entirely sure when the Clarion came offline and we would have stopped getting to it was like last fall, I think. It was like yeah, in the last. Yeah. So I, I would so say it, 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 you know, while it is a loss to us, there's no question. The um, other problem too is that the state, the state numbers they give us are are behind a little bit right. as well. The collections take a while. So Terry's been trying to figure that out, like because the the actual collections there's a lag time mm -hmm. uh, between when the collections are done to when we get them. Right. So, so we, these payments for 2017, we got the first week of October. <coughs> do those actually reflect July, August, September, or do they reflect yeah. mm -hmm. May, June, and July? That's one of those pieces that yeah, Terry's been trying on. to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it remains to be seen what the impact of the clearing going away will be. All right, other questions on this one? Uh, overall, as you say, this is a reflection of a, of a burgeoning economy, and particularly a local burgeoning economy, although, you know, meals taxes and hotel taxes may also reflect increased fees or rates, and the, whereas the parking revenues are the ones that uh, I think are, are more of a litmus test in some sense. Because it, the rates have not changed, which may be changing soon enough, but they have not changed in so far. But we are now seeing clearly there's we're either people are being more conscientious in paying, or we're catching more people, or point in fact actually there are more people coming to Northampton and parking for whatever reason more I'm presumed to do business. So is it your sense that that actually is? There are clearly pressures that were identified in review here uh, in the subcommittee. There are pressures being realized by a lot of retailers in downtown Northampton. But one of the things is that the foot traffic is still not only stable, but it's increasing. And foot traffic, I would say, is reflected by the parking, which it might be a leap. But yeah, the parking numbers that I gave you did not include tickets. That was just revenue. Right. That's just revenue from popping coins on the meters. Right. Um, you know, part of the increase from 15 to 16 is due to the weather as well, because 15 it's a nice was day. down because a lot of people, there was no place to park because there were snow piles. And, um, so, you know, part of, but I would say, you know, overall, I've kept a history of the, the parking revenue 
for multiple years, and it's and it's stable. And I and, and this year we did see increases. I think the other three quarters that I reported to you showed that they had increases over the prior year. But again, I think we need a little bit longer term trend to look at because of the you know the bad winter that we had. Right. And it was interesting in 15, the garage revenue was up because whenever there was a snow event, people would move their cars. But the last quarter you reported, we, you were about 12% uh, above or so uh, from previous previous year. Um, clearly, there weren't snow events in either case uh, during those, those periods, so that they, they would be roughly comparable, I would assume. Right. I, think, you know, I think overall, it's a very, it's a very You all have an estimate, you know, we're updating our machines to take debit credit cards. What do you suspect will be the impact on parking revenue when we add that flexibility for people? Oh. Uh, well, well, when we did the garage, the garage, the garage, I think we've seen the revenue growing in the garage because it's much more convenient. Um, we do have to offset that with the cost uh, exactly. because using debit cards and credit cards, Process. I, I believe the cost has been in the $20,000 range for the garage to have the, have, to have the, to have the convenience of that. And about, I would say it's about 60% of the people in the reports that I see are using credit and debit cards and 40% are still using cash, mm. which kind of surprised me that mm. it didn't go faster to 100%, but I think it's moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, Challenges though, you know, for two-hour parking trip, which is sort of our most popular <coughs> option, yeah. that's 50 cents, and the credit card company takes, um, it, They take, there's three tiers to the fee that they take. There's the, the fee for the actual Visa or MasterCard, and then there's the bank fee. So if you have a TD Bank Visa or a Bank of America Visa, those fees are also different. And then there's another <coughs> and some are fixed and some are a percentage. So often with a two-hour trip, the fee is quite high. So until, when the trip gets to be three and four hours, the percentage mm -hmm. the fee yeah. is much lower. Mm -hmm. What do you find in the garage? Do people tend to buy bonus time? Or the garage, no, because they pay when they leave. But it will be interesting to see at the kiosk on the street if they buy extra time just to be safe. That is an option that will, that is always an option on the credit card. To, to buy a little extra time and put their, to be safe. You a max time button yeah. that just allows you to push two hours. And so, you know, uh, our parking's relatively inexpensive and so you might find more people doing that. I don't yeah. know. Well, but we won't know until we switch over and see how that shakes yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Questions on parking for the yep. mayor or Susan? All right, and this isn't an action item. This was just a report. All right. And that, I think, is the last one. Back to business. I don't see any. So motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Oh, we, we move back into regular session. And um, uh, just another announcement. I've got a report about the podium mic, unfortunately. They were making adjustments for the flu clinic, the, uh, and, and Jen won't be able to fix the, this without getting under the podium. So when people speak at the podium, if they could speak loudly or maybe it was, <laughs> just holler loudly. Uh, and in fact, actually, when we come up to some items, it, it might be appropriate to uh, grant the mayor one of these desk mics or something. Hmm? He can, have, he can have Pam's. Okay. Would that work, Jen, do you think? Well, we'll find out. Does it reach? All right. We here we go. Up? So uh, the first financial order, of course, is to approve the appropriations uh, for the recommended CPC f uh, small grants project. And and I don't know if you want to move them as a group. I'll move them as a group. I think we should okay. move them as a group. Okay. As a group, this is six item 16.179 and item 16.180. This 16.179 is an order to appropriate the $3,000 for the GAIR collection. And then item 16.180 is an order to appropriate $3,000 for the Pro Brush collection. 
Uh, any further discussion on these? Yes. And it's also just putting the money aside in the, in the, in the reserve accounts. Right, it's yes. three items. Just yeah, that's what I understood. And okay. Yes. Just, thank you. It's two items. And the, the, the and two the items. Yeah. Hmm? The one you're talking about is a separate order. Isn't there one order for? Oh, you're you're Better talking about you're right. talking about setting the silos or essentially mm -hmm. the designated funding right. streams. This and is this is the right. small grants. Okay. First two of them. Yeah, the two small grants right. that were for the, the historic preservation for historic Northampton. Oh. Um, so, any f uh, actually was there a motion? Yes. And any motions? Okay. Uh, any discussion on these items? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Scherer. Yes. Okay, that those pass in first reading. Next up, item 16.186. This is in order to authorize the budgetary transfers into workers' comp insurance. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, did we skip 16.177? That's the general one to approve request for transfer. Uh, on the agenda, that comes up. Where did it go? It's after. Oh, it's yeah. after. It's, yeah. So, oh. so just just so you know, when I organize the agenda, it's mm -hmm. always first reading items only, and then the request for two readings, and then second readings. Okay. Okay. So that that's without regard the, to their oh, order number. Without yeah. regard to their order number. So that's why they fall out of sequence with. Oh. I thought the fact that the two were nested under another one, I thought the first one was this, so my mistake. Thank you. So back to item 16.186. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. And a second. Thank you. Uh, discussion on the budgetary transfers into workers, workers' comp insurance. Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lepart. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. <coughs> Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Uh, this is in first reading. The now item 16.177 is the financial order to approve a request for transfer or appropriation of fiscal year 2017 CPA funds uh, with a request for two readings in this instance. Uh, is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this item? Okay, roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor two readings, isn't it? Yeah. Second. Second. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't was skip that. <coughs> Councilor Bidwell? <Yes. laughs> Councilor Carney? Yes. Thank okay. you. All right. That passes in first reading. Suspend rules. Second. Motions are made in second to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I'll accept a motion for second reading. Move to approve. Second. Motions made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Uh, passes in two readings. Item 16.148. This is the second reading. This is in order to approve the FY 2017 residential factor and tax levy percentages. Move to approve. Motion's made in second. Any further discussion on this? Um, I'm going to take this opportunity. Uh, we we have a reporter here tonight, so I just want to comment on the fact that uh, during the course of the last meeting, we had actually uh, a consensus and agreement from uh, people testifying and people also here <coughs> debating of the value of maintaining a factor of one, which means essentially residential taxes. The tax rate is identical to commercial tax rate. Um, in the value that we identified is principally that we have a much lower commercial tax rate in Northampton than a lot of surrounding areas that do that have a split rate, a split factor, which allows for communities to 
tax at a greater level commercial properties. And as such, we've, we've seen that it actually has uh, an adverse impact on, on businesses or the ability to develop businesses. Now, I also commented somewhat petulantly, and I'll probably reiterate it, that, that this community, and particularly the, the government of this community, has taken a lot of knocks for being not particularly business friendly. And I always kind of mildly resent this because we never, no one gives, we never get credit for the fact that actually the community is committed to maintaining a low commercial tax rate in order to maintain commercial ventures in this in town um, you know when back in the day when I used to hear from some business like what has Northampton done for me lately I would point out this is kind of one of the big things that we do and it's taken for granted and I just wanted to emphasize that it shouldn't be taken for granted <coughs> it is we're all committed to this, but the fact is is that we do this understanding that that it doesn't come without some pressures but it, it does the value far outweighs the pressures in this respect the, and and I hope that um, it, it is my hope that um, commercial property owners might feel that this is and recognize this as a gesture of goodwill and hope and faith in their investment in the community and hope it translates as a is a good thing so yeah that's my it's my little mini rant any other discussion on this point uh councilor bidwell i'll, I'll uh, make an observation to your little soapbox there <laughs> and and that is that, that yes it's a, it's a it's a it's it's an incredibly significant uh Factor in retaining businesses and in attracting businesses and and building up our tax base, um, but as as proud as we should be of ourselves or, of doing it, let's not let ourselves off the hook for looking for other ways that we can be responsive to the needs of the business community. It, we haven't we haven't ended our job there. It's a tremendous starting point, but there's more to be done. Noted. And add, I would add to that that um, we have not done that. In fact, actually, we, we endeavor to strive even further. It's just picking up the sad credit that the small modicum of credit that hope that would get due and realize, and, and I, I, it's an expression of faith in the, in the commercial uh, mm -hmm. dimension of the, of the community and that we are still committed to preserving and expanding and improving a lot. But at the same time, this is this is kind of an essential, basic commitment that uh, often is taken for granted. And uh, so, yeah, I take your point. And Councilor Murphy, mm -hmm. and uh, and I don't want people, you know, watching at home to think, oh my goodness, you know, we're in the, in the tank for the commercial property users. But the fact remains, our residential property base costs us money. Those are, those are the people we provide service. <coughs> our commercial property base. Um, doesn't cost us as much to maintain. So the larger our commercial base and the more we nurture that, the more tax money we have to spend on the needs of our residents. You know, you know the, our most expensive service is schools. Commercial properties don't generate kids in school. So the money that the commercial base generates, we spend on the residential base. So, you know, the, the reason we want to grow our commercial is because they generate money that we spend on our residents and their children. So that's why we're in favor of trying to nurture that, because the money that they generate in taxes, we spend on the residents. And that's the reason that we're trying to grow that base, so that we have more money to spend on people and their kids and the quality of life in our community. It's not, it's not to help out the businesses. It's to use their taxes to help out the people that live here and their kids and the services we provide to them. And that's important to notice. W w you know, when we talk about it, we want those dollars to help the people that call us home. And that's why <coughs> we do it. it's important to keep that in mind. Anyone else on this? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor <coughs> yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. That passes in second reading.
Item 16.168. Uh, this is a financial order authorized payment of prior year bills for the DPWs. This is second reading, if you recall. Move approval. Motion second. made. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, Pam. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Scherer. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, that passes in second reading. This is also in second reading, item 16.188, financial order to <coughs> gift of materials and labor for the Bridge Street School Library Project. Move approval. Second. Uh, this is not in second reading, I'm sorry, there's a request for two readings, so sorry. Uh, motions made in second. Any further discussion on this item? A roll call for the first reading. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Passes in first reading. Suspend rule 14. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept. To approve. Motion's made to second. second reading and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. That passes in two readings. Item 16.189, <laughs> also request for two readings, is financial order to approve gift fund expenditure at the Senior Center for a Computer. Move to approve. Second. Motion second. second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Chair. Yes. Passes Suspended. in first reading. There's a motion made to suspend rules. There's a second. second. Seconded. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The motion's made for second reading. This is second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Okay. That passes in two meetings. Now we come into orders. Um, item 16.178. This is the warrant to approve the municipal election in Ward 3 with a request for two readings because they're coming up. coming up. So this is upon the recommendation of. City Clerk Wendy Mazza. This is to approve a special municipal election in Ward 3. And the special municipal election will be held on Tuesday, the 8th day of November 2016, and the following polling places designated by the Council as follows. Ward 3, Precinct A, in the Senior Center of the Great Room at 67 Con Street. And oddly enough, that's where Ward 3 also will be the vote for it. So the polls will be opening at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and close at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day and all such voters will within the said hours in the precinct in which they are individually entitled to vote, given their votes for the <coughs> Council for Ward 3 to fill a vacancy. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion on this? No. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were raising your hand. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Suspend the rule. Second. Okay. Pass in first reading. <coughs> Motions made to suspend the rules to allow for a second reading. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Move to approve. Okay. The motion's made. Second. For second reading and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shera? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Okay, now we come up to the item that we made poor man to sit here for the whole time. This is <laughs> in order. This is item 16.185. This is in order to suspend parking fees for certain dates. No, that's not the one anyway. I'm sorry, Amanda. Uh, in, in 2016. Is there a motion? Yes. Okay. Any discussion on this item? <coughs> Roll call, please. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to note that the Transportation and Parking Commission reviewed this and gave it a unanimous positive recommendation. I'm not sure if the Code of Ordinances currently requires us to do that or not, but just duly noting that 
Thanks. Commission it's looked a, at it. To that effect, yeah. actually, yes. Mm -hmm. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. That passes in first reading, and we'll have enough time for a second reading at the, at the proper time that one of those first states doesn't show up yet. So, item 16.187 this is an order to impose um, a lien for cross connection charges and fees that have not been paid by the due date. Move we'll approval. Okay. Motions made and seconded in discussion. Roll call. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. That passes in first reading. Second reading will be in our first meeting in November. <coughs> now into ordinances. Uh, here we go. This is the proposal to amend parking regulations on Main Street and Old South Street. No, here we don't go. <laughs> yes, well, we do go. An old, old South Street parking lot with an explanation from Mayor Narkowitz. That's actually listed in the title. The motion's made and seconded. That's not a, that's not a motion yet on that. Um, do you, do you want to address this rather than me read your letter? Sure. If you want, I mean, if, <coughs> You're talking about the old South Street one. This is the old South Street parking lot. Oh, this is a super title ordinance. for all three of those. The, for all three of the upcoming. Yeah. Yes, they're all part of a, yeah. sort of the same set. Um, Four, five, and six. Should, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sure. Fine. Well, uh, you, the, you don't. You don't have to. If Councilor no. can I make a motion to take them as a group since they sort of second come together? Awesome. Okay. So can okay. Split them if, so yeah. to put it on the floor. Yeah. Sure. Very good. Okay. Okay. Um, so as I as I did say in the memo that I submitted to you, um, these are the first of several uh, changes that I'll be submitting over the next several months um, uh, as, as part of <coughs> implementing um, several of the recommendations of our downtown Northampton parking management study that was prepared by walking, Walker uh, Parking Consultants. Um, these these ordinances combine specifically uh, to implement the recommendation that the on-street parking along Main Street, sort of two changes, um, that we extend that, that Main Street downtown parking to from one hour to two hours, um, and then the recommendation that the hourly fee, which is currently 75 cents an hour, um, be increased to $1 uh, per hour. The, um, the old South Street uh, uh, reference um, is to align uh, that uh, there's a small section of one hour parking there that would increase that to two hour parking as well, just to align it with, um, with Main Street. Um, <coughs> so, you know, again, essentially as the, as the, um, as the study showed, uh, this is um, one part of our parking system um, where uh, there is not adequate turnover and where, um, you know, the folks who are out there observed, you know, people, it's called cruising for parking, uh, you know, making laps for parking. Um, and one of the pieces that they noted was that, you know, it's, it's our most prime parking. Um, obviously, judging by the number of people who want it, it's the most convenient to businesses on Main Street, um, but that we're not really pricing it that way, that it's priced comparably to uh, parking <laughs> side streets, you know, adjacent side streets. So part of the effort is to, um, to set the parking rate um, such that it will, uh, you know, may, may make folks who make economic decisions about parking decide I'm going to park, you know, somewhere else I can park, um, you know, one street back for 75 cents an hour. The further back I go, 50 cents, 25 cents, I can park in the garage for the first hour free. Um, so that was the recommendation. And then the two hours, which is something that we've heard um, we heard a, I've heard a lot from, from business um, owners downtown. It also came out at the public meetings that we held, that Walker Parking held. Um, just the idea that one hour does kind of, is kind of a tight time frame for someone who wants to come and, you know, have an appointment or go have lunch or do multiple errands downtown. So, so this kind of does two different things. So that's the, um, that's what's coming forward. I, as I note in the memo, um, we are going to be bringing forward in January some of the other recommendations that are kind of tied to technology and some of the technology changes. So we, we are making these 
um, these ones first on Main Street, primarily because I want to get them in place in time for the holiday uh, shopping season um, for bag day. And, and uh, so we're going to um, make these. These are relatively straightforward. We would be just reprogramming the meters, which is not a big deal, and uh, temporarily reprogramming the chip in the kiosks on Main Street um, to extend them to two hours and obviously changing the time limit. Moving forward, um, really excited about the technology that we'll be deploying around all of our kiosks. And then what I plan to do is come forward with some of the other changes that were recommended. Primarily, um, you know, our Masonic uh, street lot behind Main Street. Um, and it's often referred to as the Armory Street lot, uh, or, or um, yeah, it's the Armory Street lot. Um, and making that, extending that from two hours to three hours. So again, <coughs> trying to create different time zones, different parking zones at different price points uh, to make it more convenient for people. And also, you know, stratify the rates properly. And also, you know, someone who wants more than two hours has a, a really nearby option to do that. So, so those will be coming forward later. But this, these are ones we wanted to get done before, uh, before bag day and in time for the holiday season. Um. What's the council's pleasure? I can read the ordinances as as they are, mm -hmm. and or would you prefer to discuss them now or ask questions of the mayor now before I read the ordinances? <coughs> no preference. I Me, mean, if you have questions for the mayor now, will seem an appropriate time to ask them and share them. Unless, Councilor Bidwell. Uh, I I noticed that the, the, the one of the recommendations in the study that you're not acting on now is the uh, extension of metered time till 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I get the pros and cons of that. Do you, do you, do you see a, a, a time down, down the road where it might make sense to, to, uh, to, to add that metered time? In well, one of the things that, I, that I, I understand it from a policy perspective, but one of the things that they, in their recommendation, <laughs> they were only making that recommendation for Main Street. Um, so the recommendation was the three things they said we should do on Main Street, go to two hours, go to dollar, um, and then change the time to, to extend Main Street later. And I think the idea was to, um, you know, to try to, uh, you know, create a little bit more um, parking management into the closer to the dinner hour and into the dinner hour. So people who are coming downtown for the, you know, more of the nighttime economy. Um, it might help there. The problem is, A, I talked to a lot of uh, business owners downtown, um, and they, they, that wasn't a concern for them, um, and they, they uh, weren't really keen on it. The other thing is I thought it would be really confusing um, to, you know, park on Masonic Street or Center Street and, you know, one night and your meter only lasts till 6, and then you park right around the corner on Main Street. Um, and you know, you suddenly you come out and you've got a ticket, and wait a minute. And, but so I mean, it, it would be kind of confusing, I think, for people. I think I know um, some communities, uh, like Amherst, for example. I think they they have a lot, one particular lot on the common that they have extended time on, um, as opposed to. So I think if we're going to have a conversation about it, I want to I'd want to do it more holistically, and I think it would be something to consider for the entire central business. Right. Um, but at this point, I kind of want to see. Uh, how these incremental changes we make work. Um, and again, based on the feedback I got from business owners and just the concern about how you would, we're already challenged with trying to inform people about how our parking system works, and that's a separate project we're working on, but this would be challenging as well. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I, I would have a comment, I don't have a question. So um, my comment is just to express support for um, this proposal. The Transportation Parking Commission again reviewed this and gave it a positive recommendation unanimously. And I guess what I would just observe today is that these ordinances aren't in a vacuum. They're in, um, they're, they come in parallel to um, a study for, uh, for new signage in the city, uh, for wayfinding, um, and they come after a comprehensive study of downtown parking in the city. And I guess I just think that it's important to remember that it's part of a holistic plan um, that the mayor and the, now the city council is going to pursue step by step. 
And I think our downtown is important to be thoughtful about and not take for granted. And I actually appreciate that we are seeking opportunities to strengthen our parking system. And we're doing it in a way that's not just rushing, as some communities do, to say, well, let's build an entirely new parking structure somewhere. This is actually thinking about our parking system in a way um, to increase turnover in the, in, in the busiest part of downtown um, in a way that I think um, is, is beneficial for that downtown. So um, for those reasons, I'm, I'm happy to support it. Definitely. Yeah. I, I thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for those comments. Um, and it's also part of larger efforts that we're doing <coughs> around sustainability to try to encourage more people not to drive downtown, you know, but to walk downtown or to um, bike downtown and, and the work that we're doing around complete streets and improvements to Main Street, they're all part of that larger picture of, of making downtown easier to, to get to and to get around safely. So, Comments or questions? Um, I, 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 you know, uh, when I actually posted an article about this on Facebook, um, I got a lot of community feedback. It's interesting. I, I, was there any public comment relative to this in transportation and parking? Uh, there was not, actually. There's none here today. Uh, that doesn't mean there's certainly there's certainly people who have opinions. Uh, the the opinion that was frequently shared, and and I think it's based on the misconception that. The idea is to generate money. This, this is essentially a, an end run taxation system that's designed to generate <coughs> basically as you describe it. It's a little weird, I suppose. It's social, it's social engineering in some way. It's, it's trying to condition people to, um, to make choices that, that based on economic decisions as opposed to being 15 feet closer than they thought they would have been otherwise to a place that they were trying to get to. Um, and it, it does, I mean, it's why we have metered parking to begin with. This is not, it wasn't designed to make money where we couldn't make money before. It was actually designed to create a <coughs> turnover in parking inventory. So you didn't have people, I mean, once upon a time, Northampton's, it wasn't that long ago, our tickets were $5. And you would find people saying, well, $5, I can park downtown all day for $5. I'll eat that ticket. And we realized as a social engineering experiment, that was not a particularly good one. It wasn't, it didn't work. But the pushback was principally against the quarter uh, increase in per hour. Uh, and unfortunately, they only read the headlines, which tends to be the case in Facebook, so they didn't realize it was just for Main Street. And you were, and we were expanding the time to two hours on Main Street. Um, so, the the other thing is, is that we notice as the economy as the retail economy changes that uh, once upon a time maybe I remember businesses originally asked for an hour uh, they wanted a, a quicker turnover there were mostly businesses that were walk in walk out type of businesses not so much focused on the restaurants and bars which clearly if you're gonna go grab a meal an hour makes for a pretty rushed meal in some cases so uh, so as the trend changes, the needs in the in change, and we're we're actually displaying some ad, uh, adaptability here, <coughs> some flexibility relative to to the conditions as they change. And so, yeah, it w it wasn't really a question. It was just it was. I'm giving you some of the feedback, which I think you probably witnessed uh, on my Facebook page. And I think the other key. I mean, I think the key thing is that most people, um, you know. Uh, I, you know, I, I've never heard somebody say to me, I didn't go there because the parking was too expensive. It was because I couldn't find a parking space. Right. And so, um, so most people I've talked to, when I explain to them that, yeah, it's going to be an extra quarter, but it's going to be two hours, you know, that they, two hours is really, that's what they focus on. Most of the business owners, are, that's the thing that they're really excited about is the two hours. They're not really sure that the, that they don't think the 25 cents is going to be a major deterrent um, because, again, People will, you know, go to any sporting event, go to any place, and you know, the closer you get to the stadium, the parking gets more and more expensive. But there are people who are willing to pay, you know, the most expense, expensive parking to park as close to where they want to be, um, and that's just human nature. So, but also the intent is certainly not to go 
<laughs> up to their threshold of pain where no one parks at all. That's this is true. It's, it's, You're trying to create so much, you know, 80 to you know 80 percent turnover, 85 percent turnover, um, and what they were finding was that we weren't we weren't seeing that, um, and, uh, and there was a lot of people that were moving their cars around on Main Street, and and um, they're just that was the place that, and especially at a time when we had lots of vacancies, you know, one block over, like tons, you know. I don't, you know, nobody's people are cruising for parking on Main Street, and you know, the, but there's plenty of parking in the uh, Armory Street lot or the Masonic Street lot. So we're trying to make sure that we uh, that we price our system correctly so that people will be more incentivized to, to park. It, as Councilor O'Donnell pointed out, the wayfaring signs should go a long way that's, towards that. That's uh, uh, that committee is meeting the actively with a consultant we hired to work on uh, better signage for our parking to go along with the new improvements we're making in technology. Council of the Barson and Council of Shara. Mayor, um, when you say that you were talking to the merchants, did you actually go to the merchants? I did. I, I, I was out chatting with various merchants all around downtown to, to get their feedback on it. And I know the two hours is a it's one that a lot of people liked, and I talked a lot about the 6 o'clock versus 8 o'clock. And, um, and, you know, there's not just looking at the from a parking perspective but you know some people have said over time well why does the downtown retailers customers have to pay for parking but the evening cost, you know re businesses their customers don't i didn't get any sense of that for any anyone i think that they they that wasn't really that didn't come through in any of the conversations i had that it's like a daytime versus nighttime thing um so yeah i think i think uh i so think that they would be very happy with that because that way it gives more time for people to shop down here. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the first hour is still free in the garage, so exactly. it's convenient to Main Street. So if you need more, you can't get a ticket in the garage, which is the other thing. Um, you can park as long as you as long 50 as 50 cents for two hours, the first two hours. Council Chair. Um, since we're rehashing public comment, we saw on social media, since we haven't had any public comment here, and I'll also note we didn't at Legislative Matters either on this. Um, I'll just note something that I said on Facebook that multiple people have told me they didn't know, just as a point of information, although at this point I'm not sure who can hear us or in what way. Maybe Amanda will pick this up. Um, that people were concerned that the rate raise would hurt people who um, have disabilities. And so I noted that Mass General Law says that you can park with it, as long as you have a handicap placard, you can park anywhere, it doesn't have to be in a handicapped spot, and you never need to feed the meter or the kiosk or anything. And many people said they didn't know that. So I just thought I would reiterate that <coughs> because I got a lot of feedback that uh, people weren't aware of that. And so this, this rate raise does not affect people who are. That's correct. If you have a, a legal handicap placard, you can park at any of our on-street parking or off-street parking. Yeah, that's correct. Counselor, also, if they look at their ADA laws, it actually states that. I don't doubt it. I mean, I do know that, but people weren't aware. So part of our job is to inform people of things. Any other comments or questions relative to this? So now I'm going to get into the prosaic part of reading you these things here. So <coughs> um, this is, <coughs> excuse me, 16.164. Uh, this is to amend Chapter 312. Uh, 36 of the code book by modifying parking meter fees in class 1A and <coughs> class 1C and to a class at a class 1F uh, and be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton as follows section 1 that subsection chapter 312 of the code of ordinance of the City of Northampton Massachusetts shall be amended so that such section shall read as follows um, Class 1A and 1C go from one hour to two hours, and the fee would increase from 75 cents per hour to a dollar per hour on uh, 1A, and 1C would increase from 15 cents to 25 cents per hour. Uh, add also Class 1F with a time limit of three hours at 75 cents per hour. Um, did we in these are already moved as a group so we'll take them as a group so that's the first item um, next item 
Okay. This is to amend Chapter 312-109 of the Code Book to modify the time <coughs> limits in Class 1A and 1B. Um, being ordained by the City Council in the City of Northampton as follows. Sec uh, section 1, that subsection Chapter 312 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton be amended so that such section shall read as follows. Uh, modify Bridge Street Northwest uh, on, the, for, on the northwest side from Main Street to Market Street will change from one hour to two hours as a Class 1A category. Crafts Avenue on the west side, the entire length unless otherwise specified, will also increase to two hours. Main Street, both sides, entire length unless otherwise specified will also increase to two hours from one hour. Uh, Main Street Northwest, point 50 feet northeasterly from King Street to a point 315 feet northeasterly will increase from one hour to two hours. Uh, Main Street on southeast side, uh, a point 73 feet north of the easterly, <laughs> uh, 73 feet northeasterly from Pleasant Street to uh, point 30 feet southwesterly from Strong Avenue will also increase to two hours from one hour. Main Street, the south side, 186 feet easterly from the new South Street uh, to 83 feet westerly from Crafts Avenue, also increasing to two hours from one hour. And then Merrick Lane, uh, the south side, the entire length, unless, unless otherwise specified, will be two hours. Uh, it was originally one hour, Class 1A. It would be changed to two hours, Class 1B. And then <coughs> finally, uh, this is an ordinance to amend Chapter 312-110 of the Code Book to modify the time limit in Old South Street parking lot as uh, described. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton as follows, that Section 1, that subsection Chapter 312 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be amended as, so that such section shall read, read as follows. Uh, section that section, uh, subsection 312-110, Schedule 9, off-street parking areas. And the parking area location is Old South Street. The what? The Sinconifly lot? I've never heard of that. Is that. Okay, the Sinconifly lot, easterly side, and the Old South Street and southerly side of the old railroad bed. Um, and the number of spaces, 21 spaces in front of the Maplewood Shops. <laughs> and the time limit now is one hour. It would be increased to two hours as Class 1C. It's in Conifly. Okay. All right. That's the, that are, those, them are, the, those are the three ordinances that are being considered as a group. Any, any discussion? Oh, Just on uh, the middle one, 16.165. Yeah. This is probably something um, to have been discussed in committee, but I'm just sort of realizing it now, and so therefore it might be something to talk about on second reading. Um, you know, the third row says Main Street, both entire length, and then the next three rows are subsections of Main Street. So I'm not sure you know, why we need the, those three rows if uh, the one right above the three is saying all of Main Street. So maybe I'll flag that and look, unless there's an answer that we know. I think that was the format it was in before. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's intended to account for gap. It says entire length unless otherwise specified, because then we do have gaps in Main Street. Um, like there's no parking in front of Pulaski Park. Right. You have a 15 minute space or something. Yeah, exactly. So I think right. that must be. Um, so that one's that's fine. A, that was the format that it was in, so yeah. we just kind of <coughs> used that same format. So, okay. Um, so I guess the un I guess it's unless otherwise specified, and then below we're specifying right. a few different sections. But, but for the same, exact same parking rules. So could, could you're right. Yeah. Could I request for uh, the second reading maybe a map, an illustrative map that would would yeah. show. Where the where we can the look at that language, it may just be superfluous. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We could, we could just strike the entire length and just go with yeah, right. the sections that we. Seeing have. there's superfluous language in in any of our codes and ordinances. No. All right. Well, it, it, but anyway, yeah. maybe a graphic illustration yeah, might help. Word, like yeah. do, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
any other comments or questions? I'm happy to look into that, though. But yeah, thank you. That's a great answer. Or discussion on, this side, on these items. No. Okay. This is in first reading. Uh, roll call, please, for all three items. Mm -hmm. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. There will be an opportunity for the public to weigh in and discuss at uh, our next meeting where we'll have a second reading of this item. Um, item 16.172 is an ordinance to amend the list of enforcing officers and penalties for non criminal disposition from Chapter 40 5 of the Code Book. Um, there we go. And, uh, um, this, is, this is a request it's upon the recommendation of the mayor. Uh, this is to essentially change, well, okay, this is an ordinance of the City of Northampton providing that the Code of Ordinance of the City of Northampton <coughs> be amended by revising subsection chapter 40-5 uh, of said code, providing that the listing enforcing officers and penalties for non-criminal disposition be ordained by the City Council in the City of Northampton. Um, it is, the enforcing officer, police can impose a $20 fine. Um, and perhaps the mayor would want to speak to this and send it soon. Yes, or the Chicago Oh, well, okay. Um, I well, actually, I'll accept a motion first. So <coughs> move. Second. Okay. Do you want to, Councilor O'Donnell, you want to speak to this? I mean, I just understand this whole section to be about what you can't do on sidewalks, you can't ride a skateboard, you yeah. can't so throw snowballs at people and stuff like that. Right now that has, um, you're, you're not allowed to do certain things on Main Street but then there's no actual um, penalty. Uh, there's no actual um, <laughs> uh, ticket or penalty attached. So um, we've gotten reports of um, these kinds of issues and you know, it's sort of like the uh, stern warning from officer so-and-so or something is about all that I think. Um, so there, I think that the, idea, the police were just saying that yeah, there's this section of the code but there's no actual, um, you know, most of our sections have uh, you know, an enforcement section, and then there's actually a penalty section that says what, what's the enforcement mechanism. So this is a $20 ticket. And yeah. and this is in, the, now, there's a prescribed district for uh, where skateboards and other That's correct. wheeled uh, devices are not allowed on sidewalks. That is correct. With excluding uh, excluding uh, wheelchairs mm -hmm. and strollers. And yep, and we, we had a kind of a spate of um, folks biking, right. zipping around, um, you know, people coming out of stores and like, almost hitting folks and getting hit, that kind of thing. And so <coughs> it's something we've been mindful of, but the police let us know that when they looked at this, that there wasn't actually uh, uh, an accompanying, you know, section in the uh, in the list of penalties for non criminal In the past, the police used to confiscate a skateboard, which now it seems that was illegal. Mm. That since there was no there was no enforcement, and they were wondering about all those skateboards. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's confiscated skateboards, which actually promote, prompted the whole discussion about where it would correct. create a greater allowance of uh, skateboard use, and also contributed to the development of the skate park. That's correct. Because the police and no one ever called them on it or called us on it. The fact that they were doing illegal confiscations of property. Oh. They confiscated, in fact, of one. Child of uh, one, a preeminent attorney. I'm surprised I didn't catch that. Okay, uh, Council Klein, you had a question. Um, this is an interesting uh, ordinance to me because uh, something recently came up in Ward Seven that was not enforceable exactly. mm -hmm. by the police, and so I'm wondering. I mean, we have one particular violation, as it were, that's being referenced here mm -hmm. when there are all kinds of things in our code of ordinances that are not. Um, we're not able to address mm -hmm. using the police. So I'm wondering if there's some, um, if the, there's some movement with this one to kind of go through the ordinances yep. and really figure out where we have a similar issue so that we can make sure that the police, in fact, are able to um, enforce all of our ordinances. I, I, I understand what you're talking about. I know the situation you're talking about. <laughs> um, I, I think the one you're talking about is unique because that's a, um, yeah, it's a, Typically, it would be a second-hand license that someone needs to apply for, and in this case, someone was operating without that. Um, so I know we were 
scratching our heads trying to figure that, that in the absence of a license, who would be the, who would enforce? Um, because it's actually a license you issue, the city council issues, um, and there's no, there's nothing in the ordinance specifying what the penalty is for not having that license. So we are trying, I know the city solicitor has been um, communicating with that particular person, but we do find these little gaps, so that is something we're looking at, trying to figure that out to bring them into compliance. But we, we do always have the mechanism of, in that case, where someone's operating without a license of mm -hmm. um, going to court, you know, uh, you know, summonsing them to court, and I think that uh, would probably be the next step as that moves along. I, don't, I haven't gotten an update on that particular situation. but It's all set and taken care of, but <coughs> just using that as an example. No doubt about it. Another yep. piece, and so I'm just, I'm wondering if as a council, perhaps the legislative um, committee, ledge committee could uh, do some kind of update mm -hmm. and look through um, ordinance and We've see if we don't have the enforcement mechanism. We've got a lot of ordinance reviews relative to the charter and I, we still keep finding little things that slipped us the first time. So this is the kind of thing that we need to try to identify. And sometimes we don't know them until a situation arises. So, um, but yeah, but definitely. The, the holiday parking was another one that we discovered probably should have been addressed when the charter change happened. So there's some stuff in there to deal with, so. Uh, Councilor Bartz and Councilor right. O'Donnell. Councilor Klein, I thank you for that recommendation because I think, Mayor, you know also we're having a problem in Ward 6 and um, and it's the language which the police department cannot do anything because of one word, unreasonable, noise, a noise ordinance, okay? How do you actually go ahead and find somebody when you say unreasonable? I could be looking at something and say, oh, that's a loud noise, and you're saying, oh, no, it's not. So I agree with her. I think some of these ordinances need to be looked at very, very carefully because the police department already said because of just that language, they can't do anything. Uh, Councilor okay. uh, I'm just, I'm going to withdraw. I think I might be encouraging us to go too far afield if I ask right. I, we should stick this to is, the yeah to I stay did, stay on this one yeah. item but yeah. but it, 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 it was interesting helpful for, though it, it was helpful for clarification as to what yeah. the issue was so. okay any other discussion or comments on this ordinance which is essentially empowering the police to issue a fine for the violation of uh, the sidewalk restrictions no uh, roll call, please. Councilor Chair? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Passes in first reading. Uh, our last item is 16.182, an ordinance regarding no parking at certain times in the roundhouse lot. And this is to refer to the, the unlegislative matters. Is there a motion to refer? A motion to refer. Second. Any discussion on the referral? No. Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, what time is it? Oh, no donuts. Um, no donuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I have no uh, updates, and there's no information requests and no new business. So the next thing what is move to adjourn. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all very much. Thanks a lot.